Hello and welcome back to Here We Tow. Today I'm at Wander Home at Nottingley and they've allowed me to come and film a review of this. It's the Eldis Buccaneer Barracuda, the 2023 model. Now I did have a brief look at these at the Eldis launch, but I'm going to have a better look today, show you around the new features and things that are on offer. Now this is an absolute flagship caravan and as you can see by the price, £46,949. It is a lot of money. So what are we going to get on this flagship caravan? Well, I'm going to tell you all about it. First of all, let's start, as always, with the important facts and figures. So the Barracuda, this is a four berth caravan. This is a new model. And what I do like about the Buccaneers is they're certainly catching of the eye silver sides, silver front and beautiful tinted windows. You cannot see into this van, but you can see out. Size wise, it is a big caravan. It's a twin axle. In total length, it's 26 feet and 10 inches or eight meters and 18 centimeters. It's a wide caravan. It's eight feet in width. Weight wise, so the Barracuda is very heavy. It's 1,990 kilograms in weight. Payload, you're going to get 159 kilograms. That's not a huge payload for such a big caravan. So bear that in mind. Up plating, you can only up plate the Barracuda to 2000 kilograms. So that's 10 kilograms. So that'll give you a payload of 169. So is it worth it for the extra 10 kilos? Well, that's totally up to you. Nose, we've got a nose weight of 150 kilos maximum. That is a heavy nose, so make sure you check your tow car to see what the limit is on your car. As you'll see, the jockey wheel's not on the floor. That's because the Barracuda for that huge price tag is going to give you the E&P hydraulic self-leveling system. You can see here the Alco Bigfoot. This is part of the self-leveling system, the E&P. If you were to buy it um, separately to the caravan, it, it, it's over £3,000, so it is quite an expensive extra that you are getting included. The idea is when you arrive on site, you simply press the button and this caravan will level itself for you. No chocks, no messing about, it will level itself. What else are we going to get on the Barracuda? So let's just talk about the roof. Now up there on the roof, we're going to get a 100 watt solar panel as standard. We're going to get an aerial and we do also get a satellite point as well on this caravan. Right. Let's come down the near side. We've had a look at the front. Down the near side, first of all, what I always like to see is we have got the external gas point here, ideal for those barbecues. We have got the silver sides and we've got the purple decals. I mentioned earlier about the tinted windows. You can see here on the Barracuda just how dark those are. As we come down, we've got the one piece door. We've got the window. We've got good size awning light as well. And then we see the Dometic vents. So that tells us that on this model, we're going to find the fridge and freezer here on the near side. We'll look at that obviously when we do go inside. Now we've got the 14 inch alloy wheels. For the price, you do get included the Alco wheel locks because security is really important. When you've spent this sort of money, you want to make sure it's safe and also for insurance purposes. You're also going to get an alarm and a tracker as standard as well. So, so your security is completely covered. Coming down, we find we've got a window here. This is going to look into the bedroom space, but again, we'll see that when we go inside. And what we'll do now is we'll just continue round to the rear of the Barracuda. Now, the new model has got the whole new back on it. And when I first saw the back of the, uh, the new Buccaneer range, I was really impressed. And if you come round, you can see why. So when they changed it, we've still got a white one piece. We've got this sort of decal sticker here on the bumper, but then we've got these new light clusters. And I really do like those. I think compared to the old Buccaneer, this back end is certainly a lot more attractive and it really does stand out. There's nothing exciting to show you here on the back. We do have the high level brake light and we've got the Buccaneer name badge as well. So that's the near side, the front and the rear. We'll venture around now and have a look at the off side. And as we walk around, it gives you an idea of just how big this caravan is. It is a huge van. So what are we going to get on the off side? Okay, so let's venture down. 
Now here we can see we've got the outlet for the Alder. We've got Alder, hot water and central heating in the Buccaneer. We've then got our water point. Now we've got our fresh water feed. Interesting, interestingly enough, the Buccaneer also does have a 40 litre on board fresh water tank. So as well as having the 40 litres on board, you also have your additional 40 or 50 litres on your Aquarole or water hog, depending on which you use. And we've also got a water feed for if you are on a service pitch and want to connect water directly into the Barracuda. You'll also notice we've got a light up here, service light. Now this is great. If you're on a pitch and it's dark and you want to come out and do anything here with these services or you've just arrived on site, this light will be fantastic on a dark night or dark morning. Battery locker here. Well, you do get the leisure battery as standard within the price as well. As we continue down, we're going to find a window into the kitchen. And here we find the toilet cassette point as well. There's no separate flush. The flush feeds off the onboard water system on the caravan. And then we've got our last window here again into the bedroom. So that is the exterior of the Buccaneer Barracuda. Really nice looking caravan. It does stand out, but it is a flagship, flagship model. Let's now dive inside and see what we're going to get in there. So come on, I'll see you inside. Inside the Barracuda, let's have a look at the layout in here and what we're going to get for our money. So, as always, I'm going to start up here in the lounge area. The more observant of you will notice that it is L-shaped. So we've got this big L-shaped sofa. Now this is a grey fabric, obviously with the scatter cushions. You can upgrade this to leather. It's just over £2,000 if you choose that option. As well as the sweeping lounge, we've got the large windows at the front and then we've got the stargazer roof light and the great big sweeping uh, sunroof here and that does let a lot of light into this. I do like this on the Buccaneer models. Now with the L shape this does convert into a large double bed and this is going to provide two of your four berths. Size wise this bed will become six foot five long and four foot six wide so a good size front bed. What we do find here on the offside wall is this stand for a television. So you are going to lose a window space here straight away. So if you don't watch much telly, unfortunately you have lost a window, but that is there ready to go. Up in this cupboard, we're going to find up in here, our aerial point, a 12 volt and a three pin plug socket and a really good size amount of storage in there too. Coming round, what I'm going to find under here is we've got a speaker and we've got a light as well, an LED light. Then we find a shelving unit and there's also a further two plug sockets down here as well. Great for plugging in gadgets and what have you. I mentioned when I was outside that this caravan does the, have the Alder hot water and heating and we do actually find underfloor heating. We've got grade three insulation. So this caravan will be very warm in the cooler weather. And one thing that's a new feature is we have the seamless walls, the halo tech walls. So we're no longer finding, finding panels with strips down them to join them. So one piece walls as well. Windows, we've got curtains and we do have blinds and fly screens. And they are the blinds that most of us do prefer. That's the concertina effect as well. So nice blinds all the way around. Now let's have a look at the further storage here on the near side. So in this cupboard, I mentioned that we're going to have the solar panel on the roof and the aerial, and these actually come in here into the caravan. And we've got space here for the radio. It does have a Bluetooth sound system. So that's in that cupboard there for you. I'll move into this one. And again, we've got a decent amount of storage going all the way back. And then we've got some little cubby spaces here. Um, be mindful when you are putting things into cupboards for storage of that 159 kilo payload because it isn't massive. Right, that's the lounge area. Now going to move flowing into the kitchen. Now, because the Barracuda is eight foot wide and this is an open space, it does feel 
very open and spacious so that is nice worktop space as we can see we've got absolutely loads of it we've got a huge worktop here we've got two plug sockets so you can get kettles coffee machines and all the rest of it on here we've got a good size sink as well it's the full length of the worktop and we've got the hot and cold water tap I mentioned as well about that 40 litre onboard tank as well as whatever's outside cooking which I don't do a lot of but we've got the Thetford oven and grill and hob now this is a gas and electric hob we've got three gas rings and we've got an electric plate as well so that's great whether you're on or off grid there's a little splashback just to the side as well there and then we've got the grill and we've got a good size oven as well and just under here we're going to find a little bit of storage on the drop down there now as I move along under the sink we're going to find our drawers this I would imagine you'd use for your your cutlery they are soft clothes and the second one and last but not least we've got a nice deeper drawer there as well now coming along this this to be honest is about the only thing i found that i don't particularly like on this caravan um it's a little bit fiddly and you open it up and this is where we're going to find the table now this table when you take it out it's going to go here obviously for you to sit around and eat at that is going to be a little bit fiddly to get in and out so and i haven't got very big arms but your space in there as you can see is not very wide so that really is the only thing that i found so far that i haven't quite been convinced with moving along now this i really do like which i would think for nearly forty-seven thousand pounds but we're going to find the pull out racks i do like these baskets i think it's a nice feature it's a little bit more luxurious than just a normal uh cupboard and it makes it easier so you don't have to dive into the cupboard to get things in and out so nice racks there i'll close that up and then we'll look at our storage cupboards now the kitchen's really well illuminated i know it's a bright day anyway so you can't quite get the the full picture of it but we've got under counter lighting here under counter lighting here and we've got lights up here as well so it is well illuminated now i'll just open these cupboards up so this is the first large one we've got an inbuilt rack for plates good amount of storage and I'd probably put glasses or mugs over there in that little rack and then coming across we've got a second cupboard and this is just open ready to put packets of cereal or bits and pieces like that probably just crisps and chocolate for me but you you go healthier so that is the kitchen on this side and then we're going to come over now onto the near side I'll just go through some of the controls and then we'll look at the fridge freezer which is on this side as well so over onto the near side obviously the door where we came in there is a bin on the door and then we're going to find the control panel as soon as we step in we've got our alder we've got our power and we've got the light switches and a coat hook and then as we come down if I just squat down here we're going to find the control panel for the leveling system and we've also got a nice little low level light here so when you come in uh, we have got some lighting there what i'm going to do now is to show you these features i'm just going to spin us round and we'll have a look at these next so let's spin round so having spun round we can see we've got a mirror for when we come in checking ourselves before we go out we've got another hook then we've got some space here to put items whatever you might want to store on there and then a cupboard here so that'll be good for shoes dog leads bits and pieces that you might want access to when you're coming straight in or out now following down from the near side to finish off from with the kitchen we've got a good size russell hobbs microwave it's not a bad height particularly and it's an 800 watt microwave and then we've got a big 153 litre dometic fridge and freezer so we'll open this up so here we have our freezer compartment really good size i always think a good size fridge and freezer is really important um, when you're caravanning most people especially if you buy a caravan this size 
you're probably going to go away for a little bit of time. We're not just talking a weekend, we're probably talking a little bit longer than that. And I have found that a larger fridge freezer is something that I personally wouldn't want to sacrifice. So if we look in the fridge compartment, again, absolutely huge. Plenty of shelves inside and on the door. And we've got the salad trays as well below. So a good size Dometic fridge and freezer. So that's this kitchen space here. Above, if you are cooking, we're going to find the extractor as well to get rid of any smells that you might create. And then the kitchen itself just feeds back naturally into this mid washroom. So I'm just going to move back. Now, in terms of privacy, so I'll just show you first of all the door because here on the off side of the caravan, we're going to find the toilet and the washroom. There is a door which I'll, I'll just show you closed. So that's it closed. So when you are using the caravan, whether it be two people, four people, or just during the day, you can close that door for the privacy to use the shower and the toilet and washroom. Right, let's venture back and have a look at these bits and pieces. So we've had a spin round again. So the back of the caravan is here. The front of the caravan is now behind me. I've got the shower now on the near side of the caravan. This is a really, really good size shower. I mean, it's absolutely massive. Uh, we've got a screen. The only thing I would say is nice screen, but no, no frosted glass or plastic as it is. No frosting on there, which some people do just like that added bit of privacy. It might not bother you whatsoever, but for some people that would be something they'd just like to be aware of. You do have a little bit of a step in. It's quite high as that. And then if we step in, as I say, good size. You do lose some of your floor space here because of the wheels. We've got a large shower head. Uh, we've got somewhere to put our soap or our shower gels. And there is a little rail above for hanging your towels or robes when you want to dry those off. So a good size shower space and a good amount of headroom. I'll climb out. If you're wondering about privacy, as well as the door, which I'll just close that for us now, which I mentioned, we've also got this privacy screen here. It's a solid screen and that's going to unhook up here and just slide across and join here. So you are going to have privacy from the bedroom as well. And then a good amount of space here to get changed or to get dry when you come out of the shower. Right. If you want to come round this way, we'll have a look at the toilet and washroom. Again, this is a good size. I know it is a really big caravan, so we would expect it. But the use of space is very good on this layout. So into here, we're going to have a Thetford swivel toilet. There is a toilet roll holder as well. And then as we come up, we find a little bit of shelf space, further shelf space here. And we've got a bathroom cabinet. Now, it isn't very deep, but the good thing is if it came out further out, you're going to intrude on your toilet. So they haven't done that, which is good. So we've got plenty of room, though, there for things that are probably four inches in depth. That's a, lady, that's a lady's four inches in depth. Uh, we've got a mirrored cabinet. And again, I'll open this up. We do have some good lighting in here. There is a, a light above here. I don't know whether you can see that in today's daylight, but we've got lighting there, some shelving there. I'll just close those up for us. So mirrored. Here we've got a towel rail. Now, as part of the uh, Alder central heating, that's going to be nicely heated as well as the underfloor. We've got the bowl. Now, what I will say is the tap is a swivel tap. It's not a bad size bowl, but when you're using that as a man to shave or as a woman washing your face, there is intrusion from this shelf. I appreciate people want a shelf to put things on. Personally, I'd rather sacrifice this bit of shelving because I've got all this so I can actually get my head over the bowl. Um, we do have a toothbrush holder there. Nice uh, little finish. And we've got further cupboard space here. Now, I'd probably be putting my toilet rolls and bits like that under there. And just down at floor level, we can see down there we've got two little LED lights 
just down there. Okay, so toilet and washroom, shower room. Really good amount of space and plenty of room for when you're getting changed. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start moving forward or towards the back of the caravan into the bedroom. So let me venture in. Now, as I step in, we've got a massive sunroof in this bedroom. Absolutely huge. We've got a bar here. You can open this to let lots of air in. There is a blind on there as well. Now, a lot of people these days are wanting air conditioning on caravans as well as motorhomes. If you want the air conditioning unit fitted to this model, it's £1,860. This wall here, so this is a rear island bed model, as we can tell. The bed is on the back wall of the caravan, so the bed is looking forward down the caravan. We have got a place here already for a television, if you want television in the bedroom. We've got our aerial point, we've got a 12 volt a plug socket. So your TV would be there. Now, as we move around, I'll let you venture that way and I'll continue this way. We've got vents in the bedroom for the uh, Alder central heating. So we're going to be nice and warm in bed. And we've got some underfloor lighting here, as we can see as well, to illuminate the floor space. When we were outside, we had a look at the windows. Now, this obviously is one of the windows. There's one on the other side. They're not huge, but they're big enough to, to see out and get the idea. We do, again, have the nice pleated concertina blinds and fly screens. The bed. So let's move around to that, and then we'll look at our wardrobe space. So this bed, at the moment, it is retracted. Um, it's it's uh, back. It's, not, it's, it's in its daytime position. I'll just show you the mattress. So when it's away in its daytime position, this does fold down, as you can see here. When you extend the bed, it is going to come out here. So you're going to have less floor space. Size wise, not a bad size bed. It's uh, six foot three in length. So six foot three and width, it's four foot and five inches. The only thing I'd say is because it is an island bed, you'll notice it's cut off here. So if you are quite a tall person and six foot three is near where you're going to be, you just have to bear that in mind. You will lose a few inches on the sides on the island beds. Storage, which, you know, it is important to people, depending on how many uh, items you take of clothing. If we open this, we're going to find the header tank for the alder. We've got a rail for hanging, and then we've got a little bit of storage under here. Oh, and there is a light, which has just come on, so there's an illumination in our wardrobe. And then we have some drawers here. We've got pull-out one there, a second one, and then just down at the bottom, we've also got a little one just down there. So it is a good use of space. They've made sure we've got plenty of drawers and they are useful. I probably use those more than anything else in terms of storage. We do get the overhead lockers. Again, sometimes these aren't something you particularly use simply because they're not always that easy just to, to reach into. But we get two of those above the bed. Under the bed, we're going to find our little LED lights that we can see here. And there is a speaker as well, part of that sound system. I'm just going to come round now onto the other side of the bed. So moving round, what we're going to get in here, we've got a little cupboard here with a mirror. So we do have a mirror in the bedroom. If I open this, we've got some little shelving units. Um, you might, I, I don't really know what you put in there to be honest. I'm not, I'm not even going to make that up. <laughs> you might just put something in there, probably chocolate for midnight munchies. There's a nice light bar above that mirror though. I do like that. Then we've got more shelving here, more cupboard space. If I'm absolutely honest, I would probably just rather have this more open plan than have some cupboard space, but I suppose they've got to put something there. And what I do like is here we've got a plug socket. So if you're wanting to dry your hair or something like that here, and there's two USBs as well. So you can charge gadgets and uh, what have you in the bedroom. Wardrobe, good size wardrobe on this space because you've not got the alder header in here. So you do have more wardrobe space. And as you can see, it's, it's a good depth uh, into it. We've got a light, a rail, and then we've got the same drawers here as well, three all together. 
So that's the bedroom space. Um, yeah, it's, it's, a nice, it's a nice bedroom space. It's well illuminated with this huge sunroof. There's lots of good storage. It is a good size uh, bed. I do particularly like the shower and washroom and this floor space here. That's, that's nice. Coming into the kitchen, we've got everything we're going to need. We've got the, the cooker, the microwave, good size fridge and freezer. We've got that nice underfloor heating. So this caravan's going to be lovely and warm. Plenty of storage, plenty of worktop space. The only thing I'd like to see more of and maybe some more USB points dotted about because that's something personally that I use quite a lot of. It might not be something you do, so this is just me personally what I'd like. Uh, I do like that lounge space. Again, there's nice room to sit, to sit there, relax. That is my first more detailed look at the Buccaneer Barracuda. Funnily enough, when I first started looking at caravans, not that I could afford one, but this was my favourite model. Um, is it still my favourite model? I'm not sure. I'm not sure about this layout, to be honest, for me, but it might be perfect for you. Price-wise, £47,000. It's a lot of money. It's right up there. Hopefully, you've enjoyed having a look around. We've seen the, the, all the bits this caravan's got to offer. I'd just like to say a massive thank you to Wonder Home at Nottingley who've allowed me to come and film a review of the caravan. I haven't really got anything further to add, but if you want to ask any questions about it, put it down there in the comments and I will answer them for you. So as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.